itchy, scratchy crow's feet, leathery, cracked, dry skin, eczema dimples and peeling, ashy, flaky, itchy, scaly skin, burning, stinging reptile skin. I got tired of all of it. That's why I started using Eucerin. The only moisturizer proven to make you look all sweaty and gross like a registered sex offender. Eucerin. Don't be an ashy fuck. Okay, so you know, I've been I've been on the limestone for the, the the past seven weeks. Now we're back on Oriola. You got the nice volcanics, okay? Just the coddling you like a child, okay? Just the just a warm, gentle caress of the purple rhyolite, okay? And other pyroclastic flows. We're gonna be heading up that canyon right now, okay? Hopefully we don't break our ass. We slept here last night. Didn't hear or see anybody. It was so peaceful. Not a fucking soul around. World could be going to shit doesn't matter okay escapism is good sometimes i did wake up to some deer though that were lurking i don't know if they were doing a whole creeper thing or what but they were lurking outside the truck today uh, let's say uh, let's take a take a minute and look at this uh texas buckeye you got right here okay extremely drought tolerant trees you could tell it's growing in a fucking desert it's dry as a bone hasn't rained in months probably and uh remember the uh now it's in the maple family sap and they say this is ognadia speciosa and uh, it's got a uh, quite a quite a notable uh, fruit right there, okay. And you crack these open. Let's find one with some seeds in it still, okay. I'm gonna take some of these seeds and grow them because, like I said, these are extremely drought tolerant. Now these are not edible, okay. Maybe they are if you leach them. I don't fucking know. You know, why don't you go get some crackers or something, all right? You preparing for the apocalypse or what? Anyway, you know, I'm gonna take these. I'm gonna grow them. The flowers are nice. I like having them around because they, you know, they they they, they uh, benefit the wildlife and shit. You know, the flowers are real nice. You could, grow, you know, just a wonderful uh, native uh, tree. You should be using more in landscaping. Okay. Look at this weird fern down here. Look at these purple boulders, pink and purple. All right. It's like someone bruised your ass. There you got Nathalina Stanley. I okay. Apparently named after a dead guy named Stanley. Again, pretty stupid if you ask me, but whatever. Uh, named a long time ago. Look at the underside of those of France. Oh, my God. Teradaceae is the family. The Zeric Fern family. Again, I've mentioned it thousands of times. I love that goddamn family. Desert Ferns. Desert Ferns. Look, these guys are kind of closing up. Got a little too dry for them. Okay. Beautiful. Look at this guy. How'd you like to have that uh, growing under a rock in your front yard? Huh? Instead of uh, weeds and dog shit, then a even worse a lawn. Take the, I'll take the dog shit and the weeds over a, over a lawn any day. Got a nice croton over here, Euphorbiaceae. Okay, look at those. Oh my God! Look at those little tiny flowers. Okay, and there's the uh, there's the ovary. Okay, those brown little antenna looking things. That's the stigma. That's of course what receives the pollen on that the spike. I believe this is a croton of fruticulosis because it's so fruticulate. Velvety too. Remember, everything's covered in hairs here. Hairs or thick wax. Okay? Look at that. Look at all the scales and hairs and shit. Poinsettia family, Euphorbiaceae. And over here, we got our old friend Trixis Californica. No hairs, but uh, quite a bit of wax. Waxy leaves. Apparently, you could smoke this. Okay, or it was uh, smoked by indigenous people. I don't know. I've never tried it. You could do it if you want. Okay, you, you know, if you're kind of bored, you need a thrill of some kind. Okay, why don't you just go streak instead, huh? See how long... No one streaks anymore. It's a real tragic uh, fact of the day today. Okay, if you're going to find a reason that... You, everyone's got to get arrested at least once or twice in their life, okay? All right? Rule, laws are not the same as ethics, okay? As long as you're not hurting nobody, okay? <laughs> just... Just go, uh, go, go do a nice streak for me, okay? Maybe through a strip mall, scream some weird shit, vibe everybody out, see how it goes. There you go. Uh, one of the uh, notable things about this plant is it's uh, the, the it's part of a lineage of the sunflower family, Asteraceae. It is mostly South American, okay? The Mutisioidae subfamily. Mutisioid. You got, when I was down in Chile, everything was a fucking mutisioid. You had Trixis down there, too. But, uh, you know, biogeographically, it's nice to think about because apparently one of the seeds made it up to North America, 
uh, sometime in the last, I don't know, 20, 30 million years and, uh, you know, established itself here, but didn't, you know, there's not many species in that subfamily in North America. Only a handful. You got a Cordia, Mutisia, a Chaptalia, etc. But, uh, you know, like I said, most of that subfamily is in South America. Beautiful. One of my, my probably favorite lineage of the Asteraceae, the sunflower family. Okay. Trixis Californica, of course, uh, if you could guess, of course, you get it in California. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's a stunner, okay? And, of course, when it uh, when it's when these flowers are done, you get a bunch of seeds with the poofy shit on them. You know, for the wind dispersal! Where are we going to go up there? It's surprising. I just peeled more of seeds off this Ignatia speciosa, the Texas buckeye. And, uh, you know, they're so small that I thought maybe they weren't uh, good. They weren't fertile. But normally if something's not, if a seed's not fertile, it'll be all shriveled and stuff. This looks plump and juicy. They're just tiny. So I cracked it open with my letterman. You can see the endosperm inside, that white mealy shit. So they're good. So I'm going to, I'm going to collect a couple more and uh, we'll keep moving on. Okay, here we go. Here's a, here's a member of the uh, plants colloquially known as the silk tassels. This is Gary Aridei. Now you probably, if you ever spent any time in California, you know, or in any botanic garden, any native garden in California, you might have seen uh, the, the California silk tassel, tassel, which is in the same genus. This is Gary Aridei. Okay, and plants are uh, dioecious, so they're either male or female, and uh, this one is uh, male. See, those are staminate uh, flowers. They're fucking old because it's dry as hell. Okay, so those are uh, Gary uh, dongs. Gary is really, really odd evolutionarily. Okay, it's a monotypic family, and uh, it's in its own order, too, Gary alleys. So, you know, <laughs> that's offhand. I mean, I can't even remember the last time I looked it up. I don't know what it's most closely related to. It's kind of a weird branch on the uh, flowering plant family tree. You got the opposite leaves. Of course, it's a big diagnostic factor. See, the leaves are opposite right there. And then, of course, the flowers are the most uh, notable thing about it, the inflorescences, okay? So these are not that uh, not that big for the genus because, uh, you know, this is a desert species. Doesn't Don't want to have big flowers. You lose more moisture, waste more energy. But the California silk tassel, they get these things. I mean, they call it silk tassel because they're fuzzy as hell and they're about, you know, upwards of 10, 12 inches long sometimes. And when you see a big fucker blooming all at once, uh, it's incredible. You know, when you see a big male blooming all at once, it's just these, you know, it looks like uh, looks like some hippie dungeon with all the dangly shit and the beads and whatnot. Don't you like the smooth caress of rhyolite? It's so smooth. Oh, it's cold too. Oh. Louis stayed in the car because she don't like this. She don't like the spiky shit. Okay. I, I, and I don't blame her. So she's just hanging on a little dog bed in there, you know, and this is one of the best. I just got snagged by this guy. He's leafless right now. Okay. But he'll spring back to life. Uh, you know, as long as it rains sometime in the next six months, got a tiny, those leaflets are, this is a uh, mimosa aculeata carpa. All right. With same with any of these fucking legumes, you got to look at where the spines are. You got to look at the shape of the spines. Are they at the nodes? Are they in between the nodes? Uh, you know, do they, uh, are they, are they straight out and pointy? Or do they uh, hook back? See, there's a mimosa. Then you got this guy over here, which is a vichelia. And vichelia has straight spines. They never got the hook spines. So, you know, this is, because I'm a fucking masochist, I like the, uh, you know, I like the uh, vegetative botany. Just the fucking, no flowers, no fruits. Just kind of really, you know, beating the shit out of myself to figure out what the hell I'm looking at. And it makes you look a little closer. Right, let's go to fuck up this canyon now. Here's another variation on a theme, okay? Ericamaria, the rabbit brushes, common genus out west, the okay, cater, member of the sunflower family, little woody shrub. See, there's the flowers on it. Huh? Okay, pretty common, but this is uh, Ericamaria larissifolia. And again, these, see these, look, 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 look at the foliage here. They don't got the hairs, they're just waxy. So look at that thick, waxy cuticle, that glandular. Look how glandular they are, all oily and sticky and what the shit. It helps keep that moisture in. Okay, you don't always need hairs if you're growing in a desert to you know prevent from transpiring all your moistures and what the shit. Okay, you could use uh, you could use wax too. Okay, you just gotta wax it. See, and then you get the papus, the seeds ready to take off. Okay, yeah, I happen I happen to like the ericamaria. Some people think they're just boring green shrubs. Okay, which they are, but uh, you know, big uh, big benefit when they're going off. Okay, just covered in butterflies and bees and shit. You know, when the times get tough, the javelina really, uh, really, they really destroy the uh, prickly pear. Look at it. You can see them gnawing on it. You can see where they, where they gnaw on it, where they bit. I don't know how the fuck they do that. They got teeth like hell. If you ever have one charge you, well, I hope you don't, but uh, if you ever have one charge you, you'll see their teeth.
And uh, here you got one of the only things blooming. It's uh, one of the buckwheats, of course. It's uh, Ariagonum. Looks like Ariagonum radii. Okay, and this is a plant that uh, does get pretty hairy leaves. Look at how white those leaves are. Just tiny little uh, flowers. We got any blooming still or no? Oh, yeah, you got a couple. You got a couple up there. Tiny little shits. Just growing straight out the crack of the rack. Okay, it's getting a little brushy. Look at the look at this guy, Pelea truncata. Now that's that's a nice fern. Okay, again in that Teredaceae, that the Zurich fern family. Look at how the edges of those uh, leaflets uh, recurve like that. Okay, that's a trademark of this family, the Teredaceae. That's where the uh, the sporangia are. Okay, they got that whole false endusium thing. They don't they don't have a true endusium like the scale that a lot of ferns have that goes over to protects the uh, the uh, spore producing parts so they just uh, they just curve their leaves over like that but i don't see you know i don't i don't see any fertile fronts anyway but look at a new beautiful blue color and it feels all wiry it feels kind of wiry and like it's made out of plastic i love the desert fern look at that you got a walnut juglans microcarpa okay pinnate leaves it kind of fuzzy. Oh, well, look at that. What is this? Some kind of insect uh, clinging on for dear life right there. But look at those, uh, the fuzzy stem. See how fuzz? They're so fuzzy. So, you know, right there we got a rare plant. It's a pretty rare plant endemic to this mountain range. That's a Peridale cernua. Peridale, of course, is the genus colloquially known as the rock daisies. And, uh, you know, 95% of them only grow out of uh, vertical rock walls and cliff faces, which of course makes them uh, quite a hazard to study or be enthusiastic about. So uh, we'll see if there's, you know, there's probably going to be more up this canyon around that bend right there. I'm not really going to risk breaking my ass trying to get, a, uh, you know, money shots at it. It is in flower though. Look at that. Look at those little uh, dangling flowers. Okay, because you know, if I fall, you know, I uh, <laughs> it's that might be it for me. But I uh, want to want to take you over here and let's uh, let's check out this member of the Brassicaceae real quick. Hesperidanthus linearifolius. And now this is one of the only things blooming right now. And I, I don't know how it does it. How does it do it? How do you do that? He's coming out right at the canyon. Okay, there's going to be more moisture here. And you get the narrow walls. So there's uh, more shade, less exposed. Plants are going to be doing a little bit better here than they would be out on the open slopes. Okay, it stays a little bit cooler. And again, you got more of that moisture. But still, this guy's just uh, going off. Look at that, full frontal nudity, full flower right there. Brassicaceae, of course, is that family. Okay, you got the inferior ovaries. You got linear leaves, linear folius. And then you got those uh, four-petaled uh, pink flowers with the, uh, you know, you can see the, the yellow uh, anthers and what the shit in there. Okay. Seems to be a perennial. You can see last year's... Uh, Oh no, this is this is still going off. But you can see he's got a he's got some woody tissue down there. I don't know how to I don't, you know some of these desert plants, I mean, you know, you spend, you know, five or six million years or your evolutionary lineage does evolving in a desert, eventually you're gonna get it down. All right, you're gonna learn how to thrive in such a dry uh environment with such temperature extremes. I mean it was you know, uh I stayed here last night, it was it got cold last night. I got like 50 degrees, and now it's like 76. It's perfect right now, and we're surrounded by rhyolite. Okay, and that'll provide me a nice segue into my next piece, which is uh, just what the shit is rhyolite. Well, it's a volcanic rock, okay? So it, uh, But you can't really think of it like lava, okay? Because, you, you know, you think of lava, you think of lava flowing, you know, very, lava being more like a liquid state. But this is rhyolite because it's so high in silica, unlike basalt. Is not really a, a liquid, even when it's, uh, you know, when it's uh, 2,000 degrees. It's more like plasticky, you know, uh, it's, I mean, it's it's red hot, it's molten, but it's more like plasticky and putty-like. And, you know, whereas basalt, you see those those uh, Hawaiian, uh, you know, volcano disaster porn, you know, it was, uh, I, was, I was really into that when it was going off. I loved watching just, you know, lava just submerge human infrastructures and destroy it. And, you know, it's flowing, it's moving. Not so with the rhyolite, it's more viscous. So you gotta think more like a Mount St. Helens explosive eruption, you know, uh, than, a, than, a, than a flowing, smooth, 
easy does it uh, liquid basalt eruption. Okay, so this stuff, you know, it's it, it's viscous, so it, it kind of plugs up the the uh, the pipe that all the the uh, you know the vent, the the pipe that it comes out of, and uh, yeah, you get that's why you get more of those you know the gases build up and it gets more explosive because it's it doesn't flow that well. So that resistance to, to flow, that viscosity, is what makes rhyolitic volcanoes like Mount St. Helens so dangerous compared to uh, shield volcanoes, you know, which just kind of are low and not normally not that uh, pointy and, you know, generally, I mean, it can wreck shit too, but it's not, it's not going to be so explosive. It's just kind of like a nice smooth flow, not so with rhyolite. And of course, different minerals uh, melt at different temperatures, so, you know, you'll get the, uh, you know, partially melted pieces uh you know retaining their uh, their state their form in a in a in a matrix which is much more melted because the the matrix you know is composed of a mineral that melts at a lower temperature than the, the little blocks inside so you know it's a uh, it's really i mean but i love rhyolite it's all over especially the southwest you get in mojave arizona you know southern utah well maybe not southern utah is a lot of sedimentary rocks but uh, you got to know your rhyolite now see the other thing about rhyolite is that it's extremely sketchy to climb because of how crumbly it is look at that nice say uh, kind of serious what, what you don't even need the spines no one's going to eat you there because no one can get to you okay this isn't as sketchy you got a species of selaginella Okay, which of course are remarkable because they can completely dry out and then they just come back to life. How do they do it? 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 Nobody knows. Probably something to do with the, you know, putting all your sugars in the right the regions of your cells. Okay, resurrection fern, of course, is in the same genus. Pretty remarkable. Look at it. Just draping a racks in a shade. And of course, you get the littlest bit of rain, they spring back to life as long as it's warm and they'll start photosynthesizing again. Well, look, you got a Fizeri over there. You got a Brassica. You know, now a friend was telling me about this spot because he was here last year. And, uh, he, you know, he said it's sketchy. So I says, okay, you know, what does sketchy mean? That can mean a number of things. If you're near the border, that can mean a cartel activity. Uh, it could mean just the shitty roads. Uh, and now I realize he was just talking about, holy fuck. Now I realize he was just talking about the terrain is sketchy, meaning there's it's all this sketchy vertical shit that I'm going to fucking break my ass. You know, but it's all part of the fun. There's nothing uh, wrong with it. So there's our target plant right there. It's at uh, Peridale Cernua. And this is the closest I've been able to get, despite the traversing about a quarter mile up this canyon right here. So uh, we'll go up there. We'll see if we can get some nice money shots. Not doesn't seem like anything's blown. We'll, we'll check it out anyway. Uh, yeah, so I would definitely say that this is sketchy, you know, not in terms of, uh, you know, gun owning, paranoid landowners, tweakers, uh, illegal growth farms, uh, just uh, sketchy beat up roads that are uh, even destructive to the most uh, uh, high clearance of four wheel drive vehicle. This is just sketchy in it. Uh, you know, if you're if you got a, a thing with the vertical heights, you know, you got the whole uh, a fear of a high places thing it might be kind of rough plus the rock is not the, the rock is not helping not the most stable rock but there it is there's a peridale cernua okay nice variation on the theme of peridale okay which is really you know that that uh, the imagination of the biologist is really what it's all about or the botanist just seeing what evolution has cooked up over the last uh, you know hundreds of thousands millions of years and again, this plant you'll never see growing uh, in the soil down there. You never see it down there. You always see it growing in the rock. Nothing's going to eat it. Doesn't have to spend so much uh, energy on uh, cooking up uh, nasty secondary metabolites to discourage herbivory. And some of these fuckers even self-sow. So you get those flower heads. See, there's a spent one. That's just the receptacle. But you'll get these flowers that uh, once they're done... They, they kind of self-sow into the cracks. The, the peduncle, the flowering stalk, will, you know, recurve back towards the rock wall and, uh, you know, in effect, plant its own seed uh, into the rock wall. And again, no soil here, just right at the fucking, <laughs> right at the crack of the rock. 
Chasmo fights is the fancy word for it. How am I gonna get down? I was, uh, I was gonna be honest with you, I'm, I was kind of mad at this plant, okay? Because uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't make itself easy to study. I'm not going over there. See, look at that rhyolite, right? that whole piece, that whole chunk right there is just waiting to come off. Nice air come here, though. Yeah, we just, just uh, perched so, uh, so wistfully on that uh, precipitous edge. Flowers too. It's in full flower, but no money shots for me unless I want to die. Okay, so rhyolite being an extrusive igneous rock cools uh, relatively quickly. Okay, sometimes on the order of months. I mean, not you know, not human time scale quickly, but in a geologic time scale, uh, cools pretty quickly compared to granite. Granite, of course, can cool very slowly over uh, sometimes hundreds of thousands of years. But uh, it looks like the cooling was. Uh, Slow enough for this uh, crystal to form inside of it. Who knows what the shit that is? Very odd structure there. Of course, this crystal could have also formed after the fact. Okay, you got to keep that in mind. But uh, regardless, it does look like uh, there's been some nice uh, crystal formation there. Who knows what that mineral is? Maybe some sort of a uh, probably some sort of silicate mineral. Maybe some aluminum in there. Who knows? I don't know how this guy's flowering. You got his forelsia going off. One of the globe mallows. Three-lobed blue uh, palmate leaves with the stellate trichomes and hairs on them and whatnot. Cotton family, Malvaceae. You get that yellow androgynophore with all those stamens fused to the central column uh, in between those uh, five orange petals. God, the, I don't know if it's javelinas or the deer or what, but they've really been fucking us up. You know, I assume the prickly pear uh, damage is all from the, the javies. Poor bastards are probably starving. It's kind of... Uh, it's kind of dry. This is kind of serious. And look at this. You got a little sedum, a little succulent. There's his flowering stalk. There's the rosettes. These guys are tiny. I don't know how to. I mean, they're you know they're succulents, so they hang on. But uh, I don't know how they escape being not on. Got to be juicy if you're a deer. Looks like somebody did not on them. Oh no, that's just that guy's just falling over back there. Cute little uh, hen and chicks. Is that the colloquial name? What do the housewives call them? For your suburban, uh, your suburban porch, your garden. Everything's so dry. So ledge is just waiting though. Just just waiting to spring back. You know, and again, most desert plants, you know, you get an inch of rain, these things will come back to life. They just soak it right up like a dry sponge. Look at them. See, they're, they're hiding under the uh, the prickly pear. Anywhere you can get shade. The rest all just got uh, fried, presumably. Oh, look, a Myriopteris. I remember the uh, Pteridaceae. That the uh, Xeric fern family. The Chylanthoid ferns. You're pretty woolly for a fern, okay? Look at you, you. Look at all the scales, hairs, all the shit. The desert will blow your mind, especially if you've never been west at 100 parallel before. You know, everything out here is blue or waxy or fuzzy. Or just covered in hair or white. You get a lot of white leaf, the bastards, too. Nice dacelerian, the sotol up there. Somebody got to tell the deers... To drink uh drink some water okay they're gonna get kidney disease for christ's sake look at how uh, coagulated that turd is i don't know where the fuck they're getting watered around here or how nasty it's got to be if you find it you know like a nice feeded pool little uh, puddle in a rack okay so you know i was up here and i, I started to feel like you just can't catch a break there's our target plant perilly cernua uh, it's no longer blooming but uh up there if you could see those up there uh, those are those are in full bloom, but they're uh, you know I'm, I mean it's already sketchy being up here. So uh, <laughs> anyway, but you could still see uh, the shape of the phyllaries, which of course are diagnostic in uh, the family Asteraceae. And uh, here he is just growing out a crack in the rhyolite, just the tiniest fucking crack. And he's look, he's a perennial. He got some woody tissue down there. Okay, no hairs on those. Maybe the tiny tiny hairs on the leaves, but 
you know, in terms of drought ad adaptation. He must just have a thick uh, waxy cuticle and some, uh, maybe some mucilage in those uh, vessels. Uh, there's another one. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is, uh, you know, probably the most danger I've had in terms of uh, any sort of vertical height in a, probably at least a year. Uh, you know, looking at any any uh, species of plant. The rhyolite looks good, though. It does look good. We're early afternoon here now. Beautiful November day. And he, uh, the rhyolite's looking good. All lit up by the sun. Left to be here at the golden hour. Maybe I still will be if I can't find a way down. Oh, uh, you know, okay, it's getting it's getting a little hairy. I managed to shimmy up uh, that sketchy cliff uh, right over there. And uh, now I was just kind of walking this little ridge. And maybe we'll find some plants over there blooming. Still haven't got a nice money shot. But uh, hopefully we don't die. Oh, what's that? Is that hamato cactus or ferro cactus? Get those ridges in there. Be easy getting down at least. Don't have to go back the same way I came up. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it's sketchy, okay, but there's good plants up here. You got some diversity. Look at this big patch of, uh, look at it, the Natalina. Just grow, see, it can grow fine here because it's shaded by this giant monolith. Hey, well, this seems like uh, as good a place as any to end it. Up there in the distance, you could see the, uh, thriving metropolis of uh, El Paso. Good thing I didn't break my ass getting down. I was kind of worried, I'm going to be honest. Look, you got some junipers too. Once you start getting high enough, you, the cedars start appearing. Of course, not a true cedar. There are no true cedars native to North America. It's a juniper, but uh, you know, it's nice to see it up here. You got the Gary Aridei, of course. More of that croton, some echinocereus. Everything's uh, brown and crispy as hell. And you got the silage, the silage and ella just draping the rocks over there. Well, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye. There's no, there's no trails here because I'm too deep in the cut. So I'm just, I, you know, I thought I was following a trail, but it's just a, a javi track. It's a deer and javelina track, and this is like fucking razor wire. You know, so it's they could just scoot right under it. But me, you know, I'm gonna get stabbed in the groin. Hey, there we go. There's a nice barrel cactus, a true barrel cactus, feral cactus with Lysenia. Massive old bastard. Look at his ribs. Got got kind of like a mild spiral to him. Flowers are all dried up. No matter. The fruits are gone. Wonder who got them. Got those central spines all uh, recurved. Get that the spines themselves are ribbed too. Look at that. Up there you got a, a kind of serious, looks like a coccinius. Just forming a little clump. You know, and it, of course doing fine despite the, how dry, despite the fact how dry it is. I'm getting pre-geriatric Alzheimer's, just, you know, combining two uh, words into one now. Sketchy rhyolite. Why does some, why does some of it uh, stay? Well, you get the two slabs, but the rest all eroded and weathered. Those are, ma those are massive. Probably weigh, uh, you know, as much as a loaded boxcar, one of them. Okay, so uh, there you go. The final money shot. Last and final money shot of the rare Peridale Cernua. And uh, here I am wedged in a crack of the rhyolite uh, like a jackass. You can see I'm, a, I'm about, I don't know, 25, 30 feet above the damn ground. You know, but again, this is the only one I could find that was blooming. So... You know, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You got to get your money shots. Okay, got to get those nice money shots. Let's get, let's get a little bit closer and uh, get actually see some of the flowers are just finishing up there. Of course, Peridales, they are a late bloomer, okay? They bloom late in the season. And uh, yeah, he's just about finishing off. And then, of course, each one of those flower heads will have, you know, 30 to 50 seeds in it. Tiny little seeds that will then hopefully... Uh, Blowing through other uh, precipitous cracks in the rack, and uh, and uh, start new plants. You know, there's probably uh, fucking peridales all up that uh, side of the cliff right there. 
okay which is uh you know which is again you just you know the hazards that come with this study and this fucking genius i'm gonna have to just uh you know hop skip and jump uh, down to get to the other side over there you see that see how they kind of see how the flower head kind of curves back that one's not open yet but see these these already open those are the receptacles and here's the seeds you still got the corolla attached in some cases and there you go there's the seeds see they're about the I don't know, I'd say two millimeters long by a millimeter wide, if that. Those little black rods, they got they got just the tiny pappus attached to them, looking like a little white uh, tuft of hair. Like each little seed, each little uh, cylindrical seed's got a toupee. But they're tiny, so you can see how they stick to a crack in a rock pretty easy, especially if it's wet. But, uh, you know, it's all just luck of the draw whether you end up in an uh, adventitious uh, crack or not and end up uh, getting to a... Uh, Getting to fulfill your life as a uh, rock dwelling uh, composite. Look, this uh, this uh, ferro cactus with lysenia has got the seed in it. See, fruits are uh, edible but not necessarily palatable. And then uh, there's those little there's there's the tiny uh, the tiny seeds. Okay, moving on down the road. It's probably one of the most beautiful places I've woken up recently. Hey, this is uh, the former stronghold of uh, Cochise, who was in a an Apache uh, war general. He was an Apache war hero who, uh, you know, gave a lot of European soldiers hell, uh, thankfully, for a, a period of about, I don't know, 10 or 15 years during a series of intermittent wars in southern Arizona, you know, going from roughly 1860 to 1870 when he finally surrendered. Anyway, uh, so he hid out here for a while. In these uh, granite hills, and you can see uh, the remains of uh, Morteros. Uh, probably, you know, been here for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Just old grinding stones. See, there's a shallow one, and there's a very deep one. Of course, for grinding acorns from the uh, surrounding oaks, the surrounding Quercus species. You, know, you might even be able to grind the meal of uh, the seeds of Dacelerion, or the Sotol too. But they're kind of like, uh, they're, they're small and they got a chaff around them. They got a you know, little flaky chaff. But yet to think that this is, you know, someone, someone was uh, generations uh, ground here, you know, who knows where the grinding, the actual, you know, mortars are. Probably uh, long gone. But uh, you get some nice human history. You know, in a beautiful area, you just got to hope uh, people today don't fuck it up too bad. You know, everyone's illegal campfires and, uh, you know, other forms of uh, desecration and destruction. Okay, so it's a little bit later and I'm uh, sufficiently caffeinated. Now we're going to take a little walk, see what we got going on in the washes right here. Everything's bone dry, uh, you know, unseasonable. I mean, the desert's already always dry, but here we're at an elevation of 5,000 feet. It's mid-November. You know, you'd think they would have gotten some rain, uh, you know, in it's the summer monsoons, but I guess it was kind of piss poor this year. That's normally when southern Arizona gets most of its rain is in uh, in the mid to late summer, but they didn't get much this year. So down here in the canyons, you got all your oaks. You got Quercus Arizonica, Quercus samorii. Then over here, you got a nice member of the citrus family, Rutaceae. This is Choicea dumosa. Okay, no flowers, which are white when they're going off, but there's the fruit. You can see those five carpels are already starting to split open. Hey, let's look at a fresh one right here. Because I could show you a uh, synapomorphy, a shared character trait of the citrus family in these fruits. See those dimpling? See that dimpling, those little spots? Those are the pellucid oil glands, which, uh, you know, almost all members of the rutaceae, the citrus family have. Kind of looks like an orange peel, doesn't it? That dimpling. And again, if you were to crush up some of this uh, this foliage that kind of looks like uh, cannabis leaves, you'd smell some of those uh, terpenes and volatiles that are contained within said uh, pellucid oil glands. All right, all all almost all members of the citrus family have a smell to them if you crush them up. Okay, and again, it's because of those uh, those oils and terpenes and what the shit, the volatiles. Okay, uh, thalosma, xanthoxylum. You know, uh, Choicea, etc. So this guy is, you can see he's growing in the shade right now, but, you know, further up the ridge, they're growing uh, in more full sun. They got that waxy cuticle so they can uh, tolerate the dry air. And right up top, we got a, 
our old friend Roos Virens. One of the sumacs. Such a beautiful sumac, too. Look at the color on those leaves. Look at the venation. This guy needs... Yeah, people should be growing these up more. Such a beautiful native plant. I mean, the leaves alone, and when, when they're going off, when the flowers are blooming, are, you know, tiny little white guys. They're little white bastards. Turn it over. Look at the veins. See the veins? It pink, glabrous stem. Actually, is it glabrous or has it got a little bit of uh, some tiny hairs on it? And over here, you got the, oh, your silage. You got your silaginella. Okay, not really a moss. It's a vascular plant, but it can tolerate the drying out, of course. Remarkable bastard right there. And uh, over here, you got the, a beautiful uh, pink flowered member of the composite family. This is a accordia. Okay, and there's good seed in there. See the pappus, the fuzz? Collect that. Stuff it in a bag. Grow it out. Beautiful plant. This should be growing more, too. Okay, it's, uh, you know, obviously suffering from the, the drought, going dormant for the winter, but uh, if the roots are still alive, it'll come back once it gets a little bit of uh, moisture. Wonderful little desert fern down here. Species of Myriopteris. Look at the color on it. That's a beaut right there. Look at this. Now flip them over. And you'll see all the scales. The scales and the hairs. That's how they cope with being a fern in a damn desert where it dries out so much. You're always coming up at the base of racks. Paradisiae is the family on it. One of my favorite fern families probably. Go up there somewhere is where they got cochise buried. The rest in peace. You know, temperature's perfect right now. It's just exceedingly dry. You know, like I said, the the uh, monsoons were piss poor this year. They didn't get that much, so everything looks like shit. You got Arctostaphylos pungens, Manzanita, blueberry family, Ericaceae, looking like hell over there. Note, note that beautiful red bark. Fucking trees are dying, you know. It's uh, they need some rain. Now there have been a couple fires here as well, okay. And as the climate change accelerates, there's gonna be more. And of course, you know, when it gets hot, when the racks get hot, you like hat racks. Uh, you get this. You get this kind of fracturing. These little plates of the granite fall off. You know, that might have happened before, but I'm willing to bet it happened uh, from the fire because I've seen that many times. I mean, yeah, you, look, you could see the burn. You could see the uh, blackening of the rack from uh, carbon burning nearby. You know, and I've seen that. Uh, oh yeah, there's more evidence of fire. See, there was a looks like there was a yucca here at some point. No, not a yucca. Too hard for a yucca. Some sort of tree. So see, with that choice here too, you know, some of these fruits aren't ready yet. Well, this is done already. But see, this one, the other four uh, carpels fell off. But this one ain't ready yet. So what I would do. And if you're going to collect seed, you know, and a fruit doesn't look like it's ready, take the whole, you know, peduncle too. Take the stock that the fruit is on and stuff it in a bag too. See, I did that. And then just give it a couple more days for it to mature and you'll be fine. So I'm going to, I took this uh, seed. I'm going to give it to a friend who, uh, you know, grows plants for conser conservation purposes in the area, lives in Tucson, and, uh, you know, he'll grow it out. But I, I think really, you know, people got to grow more of this stuff because, uh, you know, the habitat's threatened, obviously, by the expanding human tumor, as well as uh, the changing climate. You know, just more erratic weather regimes. And uh, I only say that to flush out the fucking grandpas who it triggers. I'm just fucking with you. Can't, you can't take the piss, huh? I make these climate change comments. I always get, get one or two people who just can't handle it. They get all upset and storm off, uh, figuratively speaking. See, there's more of that, the, the shearing, the... Uh, the exfoliation exfoliating is the word i'm looking for you ever exfoliate more the exfoliating from the fire the granite does that nice look see they made a little stairway here they put that there for you isn't that nice god i love granite don't you love granite you got some massy mass well it's a penstemon you got a penstemon right here not many call line leaves, mostly basil. You got a couple call line leaves. 
Is that all cedar? Is it no? It's bugs. That's oh, that's somebody's. Uh, it's just some spider web. He's uh, get, getting his breakfast there. So with these same thing. Look at this. This is evidently a hummingbird pond. You can see the re remnants of that the red flower, all dry and crispy. So same thing with these. You know, I'll just take, just go like that. You kind of crush them up, and you get all the seeds inside. Throw them in a little bag. Throw them in a the little drug bag you keep in your wallet. You know, to get the cops excited. Oh, we got Arizona Madrone. Look at the bark on this guy. Okay, not as a smooth and luxurious as the Pacific Madrone, which of course is a cool, like, you know, temperature-wise cool because of all the water uh, conduct. That's how, how thin it is. Cool, thin, bright red bark. But this is a stunner too. He's not going to be here too much longer because they don't like it too hot and dry. But he is more hot, more heat and drought tolerant than a Pacific Madrone. Blueberry family, Eric Casey. Look at those leaves. Dude, smooth and glabrous. Yeah, so this is this is a big wash right here. Massive wash. This must have been a huge encampment, you know, summertime encampment uh, for the Apache and God knows how many uh, before them. You know, over the last 10, 15,000 years. You know, and the climate was probably a little bit more uh, luxuriant, too. It probably wasn't as hot in the summer. But, I mean, you get the grinding stones. You got, I mean, there's, you got, there was a cave back there, and there was burn marks on top of the cave. And it was, you know, it wasn't from the wildfire, because there's nothing in the cave that would burn. There's nothing growing in darkness. So, you know, evidence of people living under there, residing under there, having little fires and whatnot. Oh, this guy's a looker even when he's not in flower, you know, so distinct in fruit. Erythrina flabelliformis, hummingbird pollinate when it's going off, member of the legume family, big red uh, tubular flowers, okay, very distinct uh, flower morphology too, okay, the leaves are all gone, he's, you know, he's closing up shop, he's done, these seeds need intense scarification to be germinated, okay, you can do that with hot water or, you know, even better, just take some nail clippers and just, you know, pinch it on, just on a seed coat. Just breaking that seed coat. Look at this. Look at how, of course you got Erythrina herbacea, which I just seen in East Texas. But this guy is, you know, these are a fucking gem right here. You got more of that accordia too. See the papyrus? I'm take this too. Take some of this seed. Yeah, every time I take seed, I'll take a little bit. Then I'll uh, disperse some, you know, help the plant out. Got to give back. Got to pay your dues. And, uh, and then stuff it in a bag for the cops to get excited about when they stop you. Boy, the Selaginella's doing really well. Look at that. Looks like a juniper. Just uh, draping the racks. Draping the racks. Didn't even, you know, it's, it's so in the shade here in this canyon, it didn't even have to go dormant for the season, despite the relative uh, lack of moisture. This guy did, though. This individual did. Looks like these are the, these are probably the same species. Are they? Yeah, they are. This might even be the same individual, I can't tell. Just forming a massive colony. Fucking weird. <laughs> what a weird ancient lineage of a uh, plant. This is a stunner. This is my favorite oak species, probably. Quercus hypoleucoides. I know a guy in Portland who grows these out, plants them as landscape trees. But they're native to, uh, you know, Sonora and uh, southern Arizona. Look at that beautiful abaxial surface. Get up close and look at that. Oh. Is it wax or fuzz? I'm gonna go with fuzz. Beautiful shape, too. This is of course a young one. As we get as we get higher in elevation, we're at about 5,200 feet right now. As we get higher, we'll see more of these trees, more of the cypresses, Pinus sombroides too, the uh, Mexican pinion. So you get a little bit of a taste of Mexican oak diversity. Mexico has more oak diversity than any place else in the United States as we get closer to the border. Look at those undersides, unmistakable. Over here, you got the Quercus hypoleucoides. You got Quercus samorii, Quercus arizonica. Probably missing a couple, too. Of course, you got the Arizona madrone, Arbutus arizonica. You got Junipers depion up there. These uh, southern Arizona forests kind of look like shit. They're just, they're not doing too well. It's too dry for them. I think the climate change is fucking with them. You know, so many fires. I mean, look at all the dead trees everywhere and... So many fires and just uh, not enough uh, rain. You know, the climate's drying out, so the, <laughs> the, uh, the desert is uh, moving south. 
moving south and moving up. <laughs> 